it's time for another Mega Mailbag. I've got a bunch of stuff. I think this in particular is going to be interesting. First thing, I think I know what's in here too. I should have opened a Cossie Inch, shouldn't I? Yeah, that will. Oh, okay. I suppose that's the risk of things being a bit old, isn't it? Um, I guess it may have got crushed too. That's a shame. Spiral binding's gone. It's not a big deal. I could always get it rebound. <sighs> Just disappointing. Right, flip it over. What's up top here? Commercial data may only be used for reference and training only. Oh. Department of Defence. Interesting. Former military unit. Yeah, I'm going to have to get this rebound. Let's state that. What do we have in here? So this is obviously the operation service manual for the Fluke 545A, which is a resistance calibrator. And I've got an electronic version of this manual, I bet when I get any bits of gear, I always like to get the manual to go with it. Now what that means is that I've got a piece of this gear coming. In fact, it's already arrived, it's in a box, I haven't opened it yet. That's going to be in the next mailbag, because I've got too much to do in this one. So this is some updates to the units. 1985 updates. So yeah, I have to get this thing checked out. And it's got that. I think it's got circuit diagrams in here. Some see a block diagram in here. Passless. Here we go, circuit diagrams in the back. It's a pretty simple unit. It's just a bunch of resistors with switches, basically. High quality resistors with high quality switches. These things aren't cheap. I managed to get this on for a good price. Well, the actual unit. So, this book also wasn't too bad, but a little bit pricier than I think it should be. That's a shame. Oh well. This isn't the exciting one yet. That's going to come a bit later. Let's see if I can get into this one nicely. I think I have to go down here. Okay, I've shown you something very similar to this before, so it's come open anyway. It's a waterproof keyboard. Now I've shown you a couple of different versions, and I, the first one of these I got had a number keyboard on the side of it as well. I wasn't very happy with them. It caused force triggering and it just wouldn't, you know, you push something over here and then you push an enter button, that sort of stuff. Once it's been laid flat for a while, that problem in a way is actually okay. But they're too big, there's a number keyboard which is going to confuse people because that part doesn't actually work, not in the function I'm using it in. I found this keyboard. I did find some other ones as well, which are quite small. I don't have them to hand. Those look pretty nice, but they were too small. The writing was too small to read. <laughs> so now I've got this one. So third time lucky. If we're lucky, this one actually work all right. It has to be waterproof because it's got to be used outside. That seems better quality than the first one I got, which is a good sign. Right, this is a bunch of resistor arrays. I've got this on my project, it uses some resistors. So we've got 10 pieces and 9 pin. Now, annoyingly, I've now gone from 9 pin down to 8 pin. <laughs> so these aren't going to fit. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, I need to get some. Right, so I've got 47k, 20k, and what's that one? 100k. Right, so I'm trying to have some very loose pull ups on some pins on my ESP32 project because not all the input pins have pull ups on them. Some of the GPIOs don't actually have internal pull-ups, which can catch you out if you're not careful, if you don't know about it. I knew about it, and I decided to change the way I was doing it. I wanted to use a, a looser pull-up, because currently I've only got uh, is it 10k, I think it is. Biggest value I've got for these things. So I wanted to do something a bit less. So reduce current draw on the unit, if a little bit helps. Micro SD cards. I've needed a bunch of these recently. I've had a couple of fail, which have been in like a dash cam, for example. Had a lot of use. It's been in there for a couple of years. And they do wear out. They don't last forever. I had to replace that one, and I've also got my project where I needed a bunch of these things too. Yeah. What else can you say about them? The micro SD cards? I, mean, I suppose you could say some specs, haven't we? What have we got? Does it say on the outside? No. What's the sound of the card? Class 1? Class 10? Yeah, whatever. Mm. We'll get to the massive box soon, that's going to be interesting. Excellent, so this is from PCBWay, as you can tell from the box. 
these are some PCBs they've given to me at no charge. I need to declare that because you know it is free. This is my project I've been working on, and this is revision number three of this circuit board. So let's have a quick look at one. This isn't much different from the previous revision. I made it an error. Well, two errors on the board. I've got two signal lines topped over, which I did fix with, with bodge wires, but I don't want to mess with bodge wires and I build a bunch of these things. So I asked PCB way to make some more. And they did. And as well as also another correction I've got on here. Let's get a bit closer up. So the things I did is I moved this connector here further over, as far over as I could, and angled it so I could get a clearer path for the cable coming out. Now, although last time I had it so the cable ran down here through this gap, if I ever use this header here, the cable will then interfere with it. So I moved it over to here. It just made a bit more sense to actually shift it out of the way more. I've also changed these footprints here and here for the different kind of connectors I'm using. Oh, on this one here as well. So instead of using the right angled headers or straight headers here, I'm using connectors. I've allowed for that on the, on the footprints as well and shifted things around very slightly to allow for that. Hopefully I haven't broken anything in the process because I've missed something. It's possible. I also swapped over a couple of lines for the signal lines because I had an input and an output swapped over, which wasn't so bad over here which is going to one of the connections, uh, but when over here, it doesn't work as an output, because it's an input only. So I couldn't just swap it, I had to do bodge wires to fix it. So Because they've got very similar names, I'd mix them up. And that's basically it, that's all the difference between this board and the previous one. Have a quick look and make sure I haven't stuffed anything up. Oh, the other thing I did is I put some holes over here, which you think is a bit strange, putting holes in the footprints for switches. There's a good reason for that. These switches have to line up with holes on the chassis. What I can do is I can line this up in the chassis before I mount the switches on, stick it in there as like a template, put the drill straight through that into the chassis so it lines the drill up perfectly where the switch is going to be. So the hole in the casing will be exactly the right place. That's the theory anyway. We'll see if that works. It should work. It takes a bit of guesswork out of it. Or fiddly measurements one or the other. So it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. As is the usual piece of ways. Service has been excellent. I've always been really happy with their service. I'm just hoping that I haven't made any mistakes again. This should be the final revision on the board. Oh, no, I forgot to put 2.1 on the board. Look, it's got revision 2, not 2.1. Oh, that is dumb. Hmm. <laughs> another mistake. No, I'm not going to get another board made for that. It's fine, I know which one it is. You'll see more videos on that, I expect. Well, it's not quite finished yet. Okay, one more small item, then we'll get onto that big one. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. Always appreciate the support. I've got another one recently, which is great. What do we have here? Oh, right, this is the BL Touch. Well, rather, the third party copy of a BL Touch. I should be more precise about that. So, this is for my Ender 3 printer. Because I've recently upgraded my main ball to a Big Tree Tech. What the hell is it called? Big Tree Tech um, SKR Mini E3. Yeah, SKI Mini E3, that's the board I've put in there. And it's working well. It has had a few little glitches where it's like crashed. It's happened a couple of times. Otherwise, it's working really well. The printer's almost silent now, it's incredible. Apart from the fan noise, you know, anything you hear is the fans. I can actually fit a auto leveling sensor on that board. I just in case I plug it in pretty much, and obviously, I might make a bracket for it and that sort of stuff. So I thought, right, I might as well get one then. Make my life a bit easier. Levering in the bed is always a pain, especially when the bed isn't actually flat. That's always fun. Here we are. This is the big one. Oh, there's a clue. Oh, no, look at that. Give it away now. That's right, it's a tech scope. It's a hand tech scope. Yeah, okay, it's a bad joke. This is a item for review from Banggood at no cost. Thank you very much, Banggood, for sending this to me. Now, this particular scope's been around for a little while. It's been around for a few years. And I thought, hey, I'll take a look at one. I've, you know, now I've got enough subscribers. My budget for getting free stuff from Banggood's actually increased a little bit, so I can get some more expensive items. So I thought I'd get one of these to show everyone and have a look at, because people might be interested in this particular scope. You know, it's a case of what fits in your budget. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know how good it is really, I've got absolutely no idea. We'll find out. It could be rubbish, it could be great. I have no idea. We'll see. I mean, they're out there for a while, and they've been selling for a while. So I'd imagine that they're not too bad. Now this one here, 
which one is this? This is the DSO 5202P. So, is that 200 megahertz two channel? I think it was. I think I've got it right. So, it'd be a proper review video on this thing. Let's get it open and have a look. Well, the first thing on the top is I've got a, a death adapter, because you know, you always need one of those. A overseas, that's a, what's that, European plug, is it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Standard IEC cables, I'll use my own cables, it doesn't really matter. Two probes, which ones are included? 200 megahertz probes. So that'll be the PP200, I'm guessing. It's got some. All the usual bits here. No BNC adapters though, it's a shame. Always handy to have those. Although I found a source of them there. Got the manual with a little disc. Oh, it's a packing slip on the middle disc. Maybe a quick start guide thing. I'm guessing it's all on the CD anyway. Got a USB cable. And there's the scope. So I'm not going to go and unpack it completely right now. Yes, yeah, so another some review video. Has a hard power switch. The two channel, external triggering. Basic functions. Can't really feel much of this plastic anyway. But yeah, we'll give it a go. One giga sample second. We'll see. USB port in the back, that's it, no LAN. So they're fairly basic units in the functionality, I think, but I thought I'd have a look at one. You know, I thought, well, why not? You know, some people may be buying these units not really knowing what they're getting into, or maybe they do really well and they're a good bang for your buck. We'll find out. Check out the review video when that comes out. Probably in a few weeks' time, because I'm a bit busy right now, as always. But yeah, we'll get to it. I've got a lot of stuff on. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual stuff, click the bell icon, and um, I'll see you in a future video, and have a chat down below if you've got any you know, opinions about anything. You know, if you've got any experience with this scope, any questions, anything you want to see specifically in the uh, testing video, and I'll do a review, chuck it down below in the comments. Catch you later. Bye. Thumbs up. It's time for another milk. Oh my god. It's time for the. Oh.